Oh, hello, hello. How is everybody today? I am balancing my camera, so it might be a little wiggly today, but I just wanted to, uh, to say hi, see how you are. Uh, we just got back yesterday from our uh, glacier trip, and right now I actually am staying at a friend's house for just a moment before we jump on the road and head further out. So if you're here and you have questions, um, or comments, drop them below. And in the meanwhile, this is going to be a quick, quick one today, but it's, it's an important one because it's so easy to feel like, like if you don't have all the time in the world that you can't do what you need to do to get in shape. So today what I wanted to talk about was what can you do in 90 days? Like what can we accomplish in 90 days? So one thing we're not going to be talking about, okay, we're not talking about, we, this is strictly, we're strictly talking about movement today. Um, this has nothing to do with the outliers like um, food and your habits and sleep and all of those other things. Those are off the table today. Today is nothing but movement. So let's jump in. First thing I want to do is um, have you guys or whoever's, whoever wants to do this, think about first picking your fit. Okay, so in, um, and by that, what I mean is, is this something that, is this a kickstart for you? Is this, um, you want to increase your cardio, you want to increase your strength, um, you want to increase your flexibility, uh, do you want to, you know, do you want to get fit for like an adventure trip like I just had? Like, what's your, what is your outcome? Because that does determine to some degree what we're going to do or what your plan is going to be. So first thing is pick your fit. Um, and if you know what it is, stick it in the comments. If you're not sure, then let's just follow around along. Okay, once you do that, then I want you to think about, um, we're talking 90 day increments. So it's easy to break things into 90 days, three months, whatever, um, and then move from there, okay? So by that, what I mean is, let's say we're going to, Let's say we're increasing your cardio first. Let's start with cardio first, because that's a pretty easy one. So first thing I want you to think about is, well, um, I guess I guess this is pick your fit, then pick your plan, okay? And then the other thing I am going to say, because I don't want to I don't want to forget this at the end, is plan on being consistent, okay? That is like that is probably well, that's what got me started in what I do. Because I know that consistency is the key to all of this. And it's easy to start, but sometimes it's kind of hard to stick to it. So think about um, what you're willing to commit to for 90 days. Because that's it. That's where your consistency comes in. What can you commit to for 90 days? 90 days isn't that long. Um, 90 days can make amazing changes. And... Um, one of them is like, I was just, I was just going through, since I got back, I had been offline and I was just going back through some of the texts in the Superfit. So Superfit's been 90 days. We're, we're wrapping up 90 days in a couple of weeks. And to see the changes that have happened is so, I mean, it's just amazing. I love it. So cool. Um, people are, you know, I mean, changes anywhere from mindset, like, oh my gosh, you know, I now feel like I'm really doing, I'm really doing this thing to um, pants size fitting, pants fitting that used to not fit, to feeling better, to sleeping better, to like all of the things. And it doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem like that long, right? Like 90 days, three months, it's pretty quick. So just know that the consistency really is the key to all of this, but knowing what you wanna do, so picking your fit and then picking your plan is what's going to help you stay consistent. All right, so hang on. I'm still balancing my computer. Um, but first thing I want to do is let's talk about let's talk about cardio. That's a pretty simple one. Um, so with cardio, one of the things I notice is that people always want to um, they want to know how far they went, right? Like that's like let's say that um, you know you're on the treadmill, you're you're doing a hike, you're riding your bike. It really it really doesn't seem to matter. Distance is always the thing that that people focus on. That seems to be the focus. But I would like to say that maybe it's not as much the distance as 
time, distance, and perceived effort. And by that, what I mean is if you want to increase your cardio, start out with week one. And week one is going to be like your baseline. You want to go out and whatever your cardio of choice is. I mean, it could be anything. It could be swimming. It could be hiking. It could be running it. Treadmill. doesn't matter, right? Go out in week one. You want to track what you're doing. Like, and by tracking, you're going to know how long you went, doing whatever it was, um, how far you went. That's, that's always fun. And then what was the perceived effort? Like, how hard was it? Okay, because this is where, like, cardio is that thing that can change really quick. Okay, like, really quick. And, and if you're only looking at how far you're getting, then you're not always realizing how much you're improving. So with your cardio, I mean, and in addition, obviously, when you're doing cardio, it's like, you know, heartbeats, where's your, you know, where's your target heart rate going? Um, but, but think about it this way. Like if you're really just like, oh, okay, I just want to go out and increase my cardio over the next 90 days. You start with week one, track. All right. What is that baseline? What's the baseline for week one? Um, three times a week is plenty, more than enough. Keeping it under an hour is smart because over an hour, depends on who you're talking to, over an hour or, or over 45 minutes, you start burning muscle. We don't want to do that. But start looking for your tracking to be how far did I go? How long did it take? What was my perceived effort? Um, one of the things I noticed on this last trip is that, you know, day one, it was a what we call Montana flat relatively flat um, trip, like the, rel I'm sorry, it was a relatively flat, flat trail that first day, but there was some elevation gain, and I don't remember exactly what the elevation gain was, but it was probably about 700 feet, something like that. But people are coming from places where they were already not in any elevation, Texas, St. Louis, all these different places, right? And so that first day was difficult because everybody was like kind of gasping for air. But by day three or four, um, the perceived effort became simpler or lower because they had already developed in a very, very fast time, um, basically a, a base, right? A base. So, so know that on your cardio, that's usually one of the easiest ones. Um, mobility or flexibility, that's another one. People always ask me like, you know, how can I get flexible fast? Usually, okay, depends on where you're starting again, but usually if you're going to focus on your flexibility, you can increase your flexibility in four to six weeks. Like when I say increase your flexibility, I'm talking about 20%, 30%. Like you can increase your flexibility quite well in um, a very short period of time. So if that's your goal, if that's what you're, if that's the fit you're picking, then think about doing it this way once again. You got it. You have to know your base. You have to know your baseline. Where are you starting? Like, what's your, you know, what is your going to be your, um, your baseline moves? Is it how far can you turn your head? Is it, which is a good one. Okay, that's one you should track. Um, another one is maybe like, if you're if you're sitting down, how far forward can you reach? Right? Can you touch your toes? All of those things. Like, come up with the ones that mean the most to you. Because everybody's flexible in different ways. Like, I, I can tell you, this the way that I'm not flexible. I can't take my um, my arms, and, and I can't, can't show you right now either because I'm holding the, the computer, but I can't reach behind me and interlock, interlock my fingers. Um, so, okay, I'm going to do it. Hang on, let's just do this. We have a cockeyed camera right now, but what I'm talking about is drop this and this. I can touch my fingers, but I can't interlock them. So that would be a really good one for me to use as my base. Here's what I can do, and this is what I can't do. Um, when you're doing flexibility, start with, I mean, you can do mobility, flexibility, three, four, five times a week. Like, you're not going to stop, and you're not going to, um, there are no drawbacks to that except that. Um, go slow, okay? Go slow because uh, when we over push ourselves, when we push our muscles past where they should be or our joints past where they should be, then um, we can cause some injuries, right? So go slow, but um, give yourself, I mean, if this is your, if this is your fit, give yourself mm, 10 minutes, maybe let's pick uh, 
Let's pick a random number, but I would say 10 minutes, four to five times a week. And I think you'll see a huge difference in 90 days and a big difference in, in simply six weeks. Okay. So those are a couple of things. Next one I'd like to talk about is strength. Um, you can, if you haven't done strength training in the past, um, and this is new, you will see a huge amount of change in 90 days because, um, if you haven't had the muscles, then you're going to start seeing definition fast. And when I say fast, it depends on what you're doing, but um, 90 days to me is a pretty quick, you know, muscle definition show. Uh, if you have been lifting weights in the past, it takes a little longer simply because those muscles are already, um, they've already started to grow. Okay. But let's talk about that really quick because I made a, a couple of notes. This is the way I suggest if you're going to do, um, if you're going to do strength training. So one of them is you really need a plan. Okay. You can pick that plan using um, a trainer or using a training plan. It is very, very easy to get overwhelmed online by training plans. If you're, you know, if you're in um, Superfit or Fit is Freedom, make sure you just throw me a note and I'm happy to help you with that. Okay. Happy to help you put a plan together. Um, if you're not in there, Superfit starting again, I think next month. So come join us because I promise you big difference. In fact, um, I've noticed in the WhatsApp group and the accountability group, people talking about muscle definition in their shoulders, muscle definition in their arms, muscle definition in their legs. So, um, know that it can happen pretty quick. The way I like to do strength training is take it and break it into four week increments. Okay. So four week, week increments. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to start with the foundation. Um, always, always, always start with your, start with your tracking. Like what can you lift? How hard is it? What's the perceived effort? Don't push yourself past where you should go. Um, if you're not sure, talk to a trainer, um, make sure that you're always focusing on form, form over everything when it comes to strength training or when it comes to weights. Okay. Form is always the most important. Um, so, so you start with your foundation. Let's say that Let's say that you haven't done this before. You have um, some some dumbbells, and uh, you can do a curl, a bicep curl, and you can do with five pounds. You can do ten of them, and there's effort there, but you're not killing yourself. Okay, so that's where you start. Um, when it comes to weights, you can always you can do you can do this two ways. You can either increase your reps or you can increase your sets. Okay. So reps are how many times do you lift a weight before you go to the next one, right? A set is, okay. I just did, um, I just did my upper body. I did one set, like all the, all the exercises I was going to do. And then the next set is set two. Um, so what you want, once you do, and I'm, I've got a couple of notes here that I wanted to make sure I didn't miss. Um, I like to, I like to suggest if you're new at this to increase your reps before you increase your sets. So what I mean is if you do 10 bicep curls and you know, and you do two sets of those and it feels good before you go to three sets, go to, um, 12 bicep curls twice. Um, it just gives your part of the problem. Okay. Part of the reason for this is that muscle grows faster than joint. Okay. So, and a lot of people, um, have had, uh, different issues that happen with their joints. So if you give yourself time to warm everything up and go low and slow, then you're going to give your muscles time to grow and your joints time to catch up. And if that doesn't make sense, please, you know, hit me with a comment. And I have to tell you, um, I can't see comments right now. So I, they either are not coming in or else, um, they're not showing up on my, on my computer. So um, I will go back and check though. So start low and slow. Um, what you're going to do is week one is always a foundation week. Okay. What can you do? How does it feel? Um, what have you lifted? Track it. I promise you guys, most important thing out of all of this is tracking. So then week two is a build. Okay. Can you increase your reps? Maybe you were doing 10 and now you do 12, right? Week three is what I like to call buff. And this is where you push yourself a little bit. So, um, week three, you might say, maybe you go from 
12 reps to 15 reps, or you go from um, 12 reps to three sets. You know, and if you've, if I'm, if my um, nomenclature isn't working, just let me know, okay? But, but basically, week three is kind of a push. That's your push week. And then week four is a bit of a rest week. So you're going to go back down to maybe where you were week two. Um, you're going to give your body a chance to rest. Maybe you're, if you're lifting three times a week, maybe you give yourself, uh, maybe you only do it two times a week. But that fourth week is more rest and recover than anything. And then now we're into week five, which we're going to call week one again. <laughs> and same thing. Okay, now you've got your foundation. Where are you? Um, next week you build. Next week is more of a buff. And then the week after that is more rest. You do that for three months. You will see a difference. You will obvious. You will absolutely, let me put it that way, you will absolutely start seeing a difference in your strength and in your definition when um, you're starting out. Okay, this is super basic. All right, super basic. But these are just like easy ways to take 90 days and make a change, make a big change in your body. Um, if you're in super fit or fit as freedom inside the course um, with all the with all the videos and everything, there is one of those called belly fit. And if you do belly fit the way um, it's been designed in 90 days, I promise. <laughs> I mean, I promise you will see an inch to four inch difference in your um, in your waist and your stomach. Like you can make a huge difference in um, 90 days, especially in your core, if you're following things perfectly. Not okay. Perfectly is not the right word. If you're following things consistently. All right. Last one I want to talk about really quick is what if you want to get in shape for an adventure trip? It's like what we just did. Okay, I have um, within the within the trips we always have something we call Adventure Fit, and Adventure Fit is 90 days, because most frequently people don't really like you know if you've got a trip and it's 90 days out like right now I think the Smoky Mountains is mm, it's a little less than 90 days out so so if you're coming with me on the Smoky Mountains you need to be doing this <laughs> ah, promise okay promise you need to be getting serious about this. Um, but uh, if you're not coming with it on the Smoky Mountains, you still need to. It's really good to have something that you want to do that you can um, that you can train for. Like someone in the group just said this to me the other day. She's like, "Oh my gosh, um, I trained for this last adventure, and I was so spot on, and it was great. You know, I was doing everything, and now that I'm back, I'm kind of like fiddle farting around because I don't have another. You know, I don't have another thing to train for. So pick things to train for." Even if it's something like, like a, a 5K or, um, I don't know, like all of those, maybe it's bike ride. It doesn't really matter. Pick something. This is something I've been, been chanting about for, for eons, okay? But pick something. So have something that you want to do. Now, 90 days. And 90 days, the way I suggest people to, to do is they start with, um, Hang on, let me let me grab my notes because I want to make sure I because I've got just a few minutes and I want to go through this fast. And you know what? I honestly have to admit, worst hair, worst hair ever. But I mean, we're still on the road and I haven't had a haircut in months. And this this bandana is all I'm wearing these days. So start with month month one. Month one, you're going to do something very similar to what we were talking about with the you know by the week. But you want to also make sure you're adding in mobility, okay? Mobility is nothing more than warming up your joints, okay? Warming them up, starting with the feet, moving to the top of the head, warming everything up because this is where, this is how you avoid injuries, okay? And even better than avoiding injuries, this is how you allow yourself to go further, longer, stronger, okay? That's what mobility does for you. So... Start with that first one. You want to know where you're, you want to know, you want to track, okay? What's your foundation? Um, what are you, what are you going to be doing? So let's, let's assume that we're going to be doing a hiking trip. Biking, same thing. It's just like, just replace biking, the word biking with hiking while I talk about this. But you start out with, and you want to know what your cardio is like, okay? This is, you know, how's your cardio? Um, can you go three miles at a 15 minute mile pace? Or do you go two miles at a 30-minute pace? Like, what's your cardio build? Um, and then 
you also want to know like where can you train and this is something that people forget to do but it's probably one of the most important pieces is that you have to have a place to train and when I say train, train can mean walking out your front door and going for a walk in the neighborhood. It doesn't matter where it is. What matters is that you have something that you know you can go to. Um, you know where you're going to go. You know what to expect, okay? Because you're going to have to change it up later on. But starting out with that, you know, where can I go? What can I do? Um, so a little mobility four times a week, okay? Even if you're not going to, um, even if you're not training that day, a little mobility four times a week is super important. Then, if you're, um, that first week, you want to start with cardio, okay? Just start with your cardio. Like, how fast can I go? How far can I go? How much do I want to train for? If you're doing, let's say you're doing, let's say you're going to do the Smokies with me. Okay, this is, I'm just going to use this as an example. We hike four to five days um, during that trip and then we usually do one day off of like you know on the river or something so you're gonna go anywhere from probably a four mile day to a nine mile day you don't have to do the nine mile day but you know somewhere right in there and so what you want to start out with is going okay if I'm going to be going you know average five miles a day on a hike and it's going to be more difficult because there's going to be you know ups and downs and rocks and you know all the fun stuff um, then I'm going to start out with maybe 30 minutes of cardio. That's it. You don't have to start out with any more. 30 minutes of cardio that first week. Um, and then your second week, you're going to add in some strength training because even upper and lower body, okay? Two days a week, upper, lower body, plus a day or two of cardio, okay? Then you're going to make sure as you're doing this, you're also adding that mobility in every day. What you want to be shooting for is starting easy. Like let's say that, let's say we're doing three months, right? So that first month, your week one is going to be easy. Week two, again, is a bit of a build. Week three is a push. Week four is a rest and relax. And by rest and relax, we dial it back. You're still doing, you know, you're still doing strength a couple of times a week, but you're not pushing it. Um, you're doing your, your cardio, but you're not pushing it your perceived effort is lower, okay? Then month two, what you would do is you want to start adding some weight um, to those walks, okay? Because this is this is what gets people, okay? People will go out and train, and they'll do a really good job of it. Maybe they're training on a treadmill. Um, maybe they're walking in a neighborhood. Whatever it is, they're training. But they're not thinking about the fact that if they're going to carry a pack, and that pack has water in it, and all their other stuff, that pack is going to probably be 8 to 10 pounds. 8 to 10 pounds is a lot of weight to carry. It may not seem like it, but it is. So that second month, you want to start adding in weight. Um, and that could be anything. Extra water in your um, backpack. And, and when I say backpack, day pack, right? Just camel back. Um, carrying weights in your hands while you walk. It really doesn't matter. But what matters is that... You really are adding the weight so that you see that what it's going to feel like. So that's week, that's month two. You keep up with your, um, you keep up with your cardio, you keep up with your flexibility, you keep up with your strength training. Month three, this is the one that um, I don't, I don't really suggest dialing it back until maybe a week or maybe two weeks before your trip. So keep building, keep building. And by keeping on building, maybe you're now getting more distance in. Distance is important. Um, maybe you're adding a little bit more weight. I wouldn't go over 10 pounds. I, I just, you're not going to carry more than 10 pounds in your pack. Um, and there's definitely other videos I have out there about packing a pack because um, day packs, even though they're smaller than a backpack, people have a tendency to stuff a lot of stuff in them. So you want to carry light, but while you're training, carry heavy. All right. Um, I'm going to stop real quick and just say that uh, this this is a little bit longer than I had planned on, so I don't want to keep you guys here forever. What I would suggest is drop your questions in. I am going to be on the road for a little while today, and then I'll be stopping and checking, um, checking the you know comments, etc. Let me know, and I will also um, grab one of my training plans and drop it in, so that you can um, see 
Like, I, I don't know about you, but for me, it's a whole lot easier if I can actually see and follow along with the video what I'm talking about. Because the idea of, a, you know, a base, that foundation week, a build and then a buff and then a rest and relax, it's easier for me to do when I'm actually looking at a plan. So thank you all so much for being here. Um, let me know what you need. Let me know what you need me to tell you about. I will see you next week. I'm going to do one more of these next week. Um, and I'll probably be, I don't know where I'll be next week. I don't know if I'll be, um, I'll probably be in Canada next week. And so then at that point, I'll probably be on the road for a little while heading back to Texas. So thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you very soon.